You guys can't hear it, but it's actually thundering outside, which makes it very fitting for today's episode. Hello, welcome to the Wild Review. I'm the Wild Reviewer, and today I'm going to review a thing. Have you ever given a review on something and years later you wonder if what you said still holds up? Well, I have! Hi there, I'm the Wild Reviewer, or at least I was told that's who I am, and this is Rewild a sequel series to an old review show I used to do called The Wild Review. It ran for six seasons from 2015 to 2018, and some of the things that I've talked about, I have different opinions on. Or maybe I don't. That's the whole point of this series. If you are watching this, then that means you are joining me on an adventure as we are going to take a journey into my past to see if what I said in a previous Wild Review episode still holds up. We're gonna make comments about how young I used to look and stupid I used to sound sometimes. It kind of depends on what I was talking about. So, unless you have somewhere else important you need to be, which I highly doubt, seems like you're gonna be taking a journey with me into the past. This is the Wild Review Rewild! Wild like wild. Uh. I thought the name was cool. Hello, welcome to the Wild Review on the Wild Review, and welcome back to Rewild, a series where I look back at some old Wild Review episodes, make fun of things that I've said, and then I comment about things that I have said. Today's the Halloween episode! <laughs> and this time it's actually the Halloween episode. Uh, last year I decided to go a different route and surprise everybody with an Easter special in October. This time it's an actual Halloween episode. I'm, I'm not lying to any of you. Today we're traveling all the way back to the year 2016 when I reviewed the movie Monster House, an animated children's horror film about a literal monster house. The premise, honestly, was not that bad of a premise. Like, it wasn't a bad film, but it just wasn't a film I got into. I remember when I saw the film, and I remember when I talked about the film, and it was just... Not for me. I'm already not into horror films, and when it comes to kids' horror films, I give it a lot of credit because horror is horror. And when it comes to kids, you try to keep everything very happy, but then you have shows like Are You Afraid of the Dark and Goosebumps that throw that logic out of the window and decide to go the route of, hey, let's actually scare these kids. That's something that does interest me a little, how to properly do horror at a kid's level. And I've seen a number of... Halloween type films aimed for kids. I did a whole Halloween series on it two years ago where I watched a bunch of Halloween films. We had such films such as Hocus Pocus which has a little scary element to it but a light-hearted scary and Paranorman which is a light-hearted scary and every kid thing is light-hearted but scary. Except Monster House. Monster House goes the next step and doesn't care if these kids have nightmares or not. So now we're gonna check out to see what I had to say about Monster House. Let's do it! Last year I talked about my overall idea about Halloween and I touched upon some elements of Halloween in the media world with television specials and somewhat movies. I don't think I really touched upon movies, which is why I'm doing it this year. Both Halloween and even Christmas, for some reason, always get the holiday specials. You never really see a Thanksgiving special or a St. Patrick's Day special or an Easter special. Halloween and Christmas seem to be the only holidays that actually get a special out of any show. Now that's not saying that shows don't do Valentine's Day specials or Easter specials or any of the holiday specials, but Halloween and Christmas always seem to be the culprits of when doing a holiday special. So the first thing I need to make a comment on is the photos. Why did I choose to use photos that are not in HD, that are not clear, that are blurry? But what the hell is this? I mean, I, I know what these are. I know what these photos are, but they are in the worst quality ever. I think the only scary thing here is the quality of these photos. You're not scaring me with your background, me. You're scaring me with your laziness of not getting high-definition photos. 
But though Halloween doesn't have the amount of movies as Christmas does, a lot of horror films are watched around this time of year just because Halloween is that kind of scary holiday, and horror films seem to fit the general idea of Halloween. With that said, there are some movies that I guess are fit for the holiday, but I don't like them. That's a generic way of giving an introduction to a movie. I like them. I like them now. I think it's cool. Shut up. Here's another thing I gotta, I gotta question. What the hell is this music that I put in the background? But though Halloween doesn't have the amount of movies as Christmas does, a lot of horror films... There's a, is, there, is, he, is there somebody crying? I guess I got bored of the iMovie music for this episode and decided to get some Halloween music. And I guess one of the songs involved somebody crying. That's not me crying. And you, you put it in multiple times here. Monster House was a 2006 animated movie that surrounded a boy named Dustin Walter, although in the film he's called DJ. He's got a creepy neighbor named Horace Neber Cracker. Neber Cracker. You can automatically see a cliche right here, seeing that it's an average ordinary boy thinking that something suspicious is going on with the neighbor. But DJ soon investigates more on this little creepy neighbor idea and realizes that it's not much of the neighbor that is creepy, but the house itself. This leads DJ into thinking that the house is haunted and may actually be alive. And in this case, he's right. The house is alive. That's why it's called Monster House. The house is the monster in the movie. Not the old guy, because the old guy has a heart attack and dies. Or at least we think he does, until he comes back to life near the end of the film, where we just learn he had a little incident going on in his body. To this day, I still like the concept of the house being the monster. I think that's just a, a really interesting play on words. Monster house. The house is actually the monster. I think that's cool. I, I, I think that can actually work as a really fun horror film. Like, it's a, it's a big twist. Like, you would think that the house is haunted because of something or someone, but no, the house is haunted because it is physically a monster. Because in my personal opinion, I don't really like horror films. Yeah, I'm scared, I'm scared, 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 scared. Horror films never really got my attention as much as adventure comedy films would. And that's perfectly fine. Not everybody has to like the same thing. Some people will like adventure, some people will like fantasy, some people will like adventure, and some people will like horror. I'm not one of those people that like horror. I rarely watch any horror films. The only horror film that I saw was The Shining. And I didn't like it very much. I thought I would, but I didn't. I have seen two horror films. I've seen The Shining, and I saw Psycho a few years ago. So around this time, I think The Shining was the only horror film that I had seen. Psycho was the second, and Psycho is honestly my favorite horror film ever. Because I'm still not a big horror film person, but Psycho was great. I'll admit Psycho got me to jump a, a few times. I think that's one reason why I don't like horror films, is because I, I don't generally get scared with them. Yeah, in terms of Psycho, I didn't see a lot of that stuff coming. I actually thought the ending would have been very different. And yeah, I said it because I don't know Psycho. This was the first time I had seen it. Jaws was also, I guess, a horror film. Would you consider it a horror film? It was about a shark. I jumped at that. Whatever the case is, I'm not super big into horror films still. It's not because I'm scared. Monster House is definitely a horror film, but I don't want to consider it that much of a horror film because it was for children and that's the main problem with it this movie is for a children audience yet it's got a lot of graphic things in it i mean literally the old guy next door has a heart attack on screen <laughs> see that this i don't agree with much anymore the fact that it is a kids film has nothing to do with it Goosebumps and Are You Afraid of the Dark are perfect examples that horror and kids media can work. Because if it didn't work, they would have cancelled it immediately. 
Goosebumps, which originates from books, is frightening at a kid's level. And I should know, I'd been frightened by Goosebumps before. Not by the book, but from the TV series. I remember I saw a few episodes of the series and it was very frightening, but I was seven. <laughs> is that too old to be frightened by Goosebumps? I mean, I think that's the age demographic. I don't see a four-year-old reading Goosebumps. Are You Afraid of the Dark, which actually has come back onto Nickelodeon in various different specials. It's like a mini-series, special series Nickelodeon does from time to time. That, I know, was also very popular. The original series ran for about seven episodes, and the fact that they brought it back, and I saw a very small glimpse of the new Are You Afraid of the Dark, and it looks generally terrifying. I think that kind of stuff can work if you do it right. You know, again, you, you do have to keep in mind there, you are dealing with a very young audience. These are children that will be watching. So you don't want to make it too scary to where you have parents calling the network saying, this is unacceptable, you're supposed to be children friendly, and then you gotta cancel the show because you've upset so many people. So I think it could work. It could definitely work. You just gotta know how to balance it correctly. That's all you gotta do. So, shame on you. I'm not liking you today, me. You got low quality photos, you got weird music, and now you're saying there can't be scary kid stuff. Well, I'm sorry not everything could be like Lab Rats or SpongeBob or whatever was on Cartoon Network at the time. I think Adventure Time was still going on. Or Steven Universe. First off, the animation is... Eh. I mean, at its time, it was... The Thing. That's how animation looked back in 2006. I mean, it's somewhat better than what Jimmy Neutron looked like. Actually, I think Jimmy Neutron looked a bit better. Alright, CGI animation back then was alright. It's not as great as it is now, but it was exceptional at the time. But looking back on it, I mean, it can be improved a little. Everything's clear and all, but for some reason the animation just seems very dull to me. That's the word I need. Dull. That's the word, dull. Another thing is that it's just a very forgetful film and isn't as hyped as the trailers made it look. This I have to agree with. Dull and forgettable, absolutely. It's thundering. If I was asked to say what happens in Monster House, the only answer I could really give is a kid lives across the street from a house that is an actual monster. I remember that the lady, like the guy's wife, she got like, was it sucked into the house? And like her soul is now the house? I remember that, I remember the rug bit, I remember how the characters look. That's it. <laughs> Other than that, I don't know very much about it. You know, this video and the, the time that I watched it, both memories are very faint in terms of what really went on in the story because I never saw it again. There's just something about it that just, you know, it didn't stick out to me. And I think that's what I'm trying to get here, but I'm like showing off how it was not suitable for kids because yes, at this point I was uh, working at a summer camp and this is where we ended up seeing the film and the kids I was taking care of, they were frightened. So I guess I was a little bothered by that. and. That made me just go, well, I don't think it's a very suitable film for kids. I was that annoying parent, I, I guess, in that situation, even though I was a teenager. But with all that said, I don't remember that much about it because it was a very dull-like film. Like, there, there really isn't anything that memorable about it other than the house being a monster to me. Yeah, I could have taken the opportunity to watch it again for 31 Wild Halloween Review Nights. But that didn't happen because I chose not to watch it. I chose not to watch it again and add it onto that catalog of films. It just wasn't one that uh, I think I needed to see again at the time. Uh, maybe it, it would have helped because I've done that before. I've talked about things before and then re-talked about them. Hell, that's what this whole series is about. And I could have even probably watched Monster House now and, and give like a different opinion to see if it changed at all. But I didn't do that because it didn't come to mind until just now. But I'm sure even if I watched it that time, I wouldn't remember very much about it. 
I think one of the main reasons why when it came out I had no interest of watching it was not only because it was a horror film, but it just looked very dull to me and I had no interest in watching the story. So that's very possible. If you couldn't tell, it's also a bit forgetful to me. I, I don't remember super much. So why is the house doing all this? Well, that neighbor, Horace, had a wife. I don't even remember her name. Because, again, that's how forgetful this movie is. I remember he had a wife, don't remember the name. But I do know that the wife was pretty big, and everyone would call her names. And he decided to marry her, and they ran away together and were building a house, so this way they could both live in it, obviously, because that's what married couples do. They live in a house. If you don't know that, you're not living life. You guys can't hear it, but it's actually thundering outside, which makes it very fitting for today's episode. Huh. It's really raining out there. But to get back to you real quick, what are you talking about? I don't understand how the house would have eyes, or the mouth, or <laughs> arms, or legs even. Why, why is this spirit of a woman that was laughed at making the house become a living thing? That doesn't make sense. If anything, the house should just- A lot of things in horror films don't make sense. You just kind of have to deal with it. Overall, I think that Monster House is a very forgetful, dull, and very confusing film. Though, if I did have to give it some credit, I will say, the animation is alright. Alright, That's a bit contradicting. You just said the animation was eh just a while ago. The, the animation is alright. It's, it's not the best. But what is it? Is it eh? Or is it fine? You know, it's a, it's a unique art style. That I'm having a problem here. I guess this is where I have to come in. What do I think of the animation? I think it's a very interesting animation choice. Which makes it stand out. That's definitely one of the things that I remember of this very forgetful and dull film. But other than that and what I had already mentioned... Eh... Well, that was Monster House. That's all I had to say on that film. I guess it would have helped if I had seen the film once again, but maybe in the future I'll give Monster House a second looky. And uh, who knows, maybe my opinion will change. Maybe it'll stay the same. I don't exactly know. So that's all I have for this episode of Rewild. If you'd like to check out this episode of Monster House, the original review, the link will be in the description below, so you can click that. The playlist to all the other Rewilds will be down there also, so you can check that out. And with that, that's all I have left to say. Thank you so much for watching. I hope everybody has a great Halloween. I'm sorry this episode didn't have that many Halloween-y things. Ooh, hang on a second. Who's that over here? Oh, wow. Look, everybody. Locke! It's my skeleton friend. What do you have to say to end this Halloween episode? Thanks for watching. I just realized that could have been the geekiest thing I've ever done. That's all I have for this episode of Rewild. Thank you so much for checking it out, and I'll see you next week for something else. Thanks again for watching The Wild Reviewer. The Wild Reviewer, and you just saw me review a thing. Yeah, right? Wild like wild. Uh.